believe it's a molecular synthesizer of some kind, similar to a protein resequencer, but far more advanced. A water, cold. I saw a similar device in a Tarkalian vessel. It was capable of replicating almost any inanimate object. If we had one of these in engineering, we could make all the spare parts we need. What if you could have a replicator of your own, just like the one in Star Trek? Though exactly not the same, at present, 3D printing is the closest we can get to it. From printing houses to printing toys, from printing organs to intricate delicacies, 3D printing is slowly becoming an integral part of our day-to-day -day lives. So what exactly is 3D printing? It is part of a process known as additive manufacturing wherein an object is created from scratch by adding material layer by layer. Each of these layers can be seen as a thinly sliced cross section of the object. They work from the ground and pile on layer after layer until the object looks exactly like how it was envisioned. Additive manufacturing, as the name suggests, is the opposite of subtractive manufacturing which involves subtracting materials or in other words removing excess materials from a solid block in order to produce our desired object. And this can be done with the help of machines, for example by using a milling machine. What's good about 3D printing is that with this we could make objects having pretty complex designs and shapes which is rather impossible with conventional manufacturing methods. Now, as we know what 3D printing is, let's look at how we can do that. The first step is to create a blueprint of the object that we want to print. Remember that you can make the design as intricate as you want, as the printer doesn't really care if the design is too simple or too complex. You can design the object in 3D modeling softwares like Tinkercad or Blender, or you can visit websites like Thingiverse or Shapeways to find objects other users have 3D modeled. Once the model is created, it's time to slice it. As we all know, in additive manufacturing, the object is created layer by layer. And since 3D printers cannot conceptualize the concept of three dimensions, we need to slice the model into layers in order for the printer to create the final product. This can be done by using slicing softwares like Ultimaker Cura or Simplify 3D. Slicing softwares takes scans of each layer of a model and will tell the printer how to move in order to recreate that layer. Once the model is sliced, it's time to send it to the printer. The 3D printer works almost like a traditional inkjet printer, except here, it also moves back and forth while dispensing the material, adding hundreds or even thousands of 2D prints on top of one another to make the three-dimensional object. Now the big question, is 3D printing changing the future? Let's see. It can be used to make homes. You all must have seen in the news about Twista Manufacturing Solutions Private Limited who made the first 3D printed house in India at the IIT Madras campus. By the end of this decade, it is estimated that about 3 billion people will be in need of better housing. And according to the United Nations Human Settlement Program, meeting this would mean building about 96,000 new homes every day. And could giant 3D printers be one of the solutions? Yes, they can. They can produce houses cheaper and faster than traditional building techniques. With this, houses which require about 10 months of construction could be built under 10 days, that too with less wastage of resources. So, if adopted at an appropriate scale, this could put roofs over millions of people's heads. A normal organ donation process involves finding a matching donor, and then transplanting the organ from the donor to the recipient through surgery. But most of the times, finding a matching donor seemed to be a Herculean task. But what if you could just create the organs with exact specifications of the recipient's body? Yes, 3D printing is revolutionizing the medical field in more ways than you could imagine. In the future, 3D bioprinting technologies could offer hope to people who currently rely on organ donors. At present, 
Doctors could actually make small body parts like ears and noses using a patient's own body cells. Also, they are able to make custom designed patient specific prosthetics and implants which weren't possible earlier by traditional methods. 3D printed food is no longer science fiction, it indeed is becoming a reality. The printer layers on real curated ingredients like chicken and carrots in order to recreate the foods that we know and love. This makes it easier to make personalized food products keeping in mind a customer's nutritional requirements as well as to make delicacies having complex shapes and intricate designs. So what makes addictive manufacturing so appealing? Well, it gives manufacturers the ability to rapidly make prototypes of models or even rapidly manufacture them. It has a lot of potential, a major chunk of which is still unexplored. For example, instead of shipping, say, engine components and other parts of an aeroplane from various parts of the world, you could just print the parts anywhere you are, anytime you want. This is what makes some even tout 3D printing as the fourth industrial revolution in the making.